This is Senator Rob Portman from Ohio. Senator Portman, you just got to love what Manchin just said. I mean, he speaks the yeah. truth. It's very plain. He does. Uh, we really, you know, these are gigantic changes. I mean, you've been on, you know taxes as well as anybody. Uh, where are the hearings? Where are the experts on both sides of the aisle? Where's the scoring? Where's the economic uh, consequences? Yeah. How can yeah. this be? Look at the election. You know, Jersey, Rob, Jersey was all about tax revolt, and the guy nearly won. Yeah, with almost no money. I mean, it's amazing. So here's the situation. There have been no hearings, <laughs> certainly no <laughs> markups, you know, where you write legislation. No analysis, so we don't know what the Joint Committee on Taxation score is going to be, nor the Congressional Budget Office score. All the things, Larry, that you know, you and I are, are used to having to rely on in order to get something done. So it's a, it's a process that is broken. But beyond that, the substance of it doesn't make any sense. Here you have really high spending, the most spending ever of any bill that's passed the Congress, of by the way, anybody in the world, and you have high taxes. So it's it's a it's a prescription for not just higher inflation with more stimulus spending, but less economic growth, which equals stagflation, which is what happened in the 1970s. No one wants to go there. So let's hope that what happened last night in Virginia and New Jersey and around the country will finally put an end to the reconciliation discussion. And let's focus on getting the infrastructure bill done. That's bipartisan. And that's something that some Democrats support and would be good for the economy and counterinflationary rather than pro-inflationary and doesn't have any tax increases. So my hope is that there's a change of heart. You know, I'm so troubled. At, at one point with Senator Sinema, no increases in the personal tax, the corporate tax, the capital gains tax. But, but now, Senator Portman, it seems like they're end-running her and they're figuring out ways with the corporate minimum tax for domestic and foreign income, which is a very nasty tax, as you know. It's going to knock out a lot of important credits, including expensing. Plus yeah. these you know, high marginal tax rates on personal income, those are small businesses, smallish, biz successful -throughs, small yeah. businesses, I'll, yeah. I'll call them, pass-throughs. I mean, this is where we should be examining the consequences of this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It'll, it'll affect the economy. And what the Joint Committee on Taxation says, which is a nonpartisan group, this is not a Republican point of view, it's, it's widely held by analysts, is that if you tax the corporation, the entity that gets hurt is the worker. Mm. So workers' wages, workers' benefits, and 70 percent of the benefit of the tax cut went to them. 70 percent of the tax increase is going to hurt them, it'll disadvantage them. At a time when wages are under stress already, by the way, wages are down 1.7 percent during the Biden administration after inflation. Mm. Think about that. After 3 percent growth for 19 straight months prior to the pandemic under the Trump administration, I'll call it the Cudlow administration, uh, you know, you, you now have this, mm. this reversal. The one thing they are talking about that's interesting to me is the SALT tax, because mm. remember, we decided back in 2017 we were going to cut taxes, but we also were not going to allow people who lived in states that had very high state taxes to be able to take that full benefit because that would be, you know, taxpayers in my state of Ohio subsidizing taxpayers in, say, New York, so they could have very high taxes and get a deduction. So it was good policy. They now want to reverse that. That would cost about $475 billion in new tax increases somewhere else if they do that. 50% of the benefit of what they want to do would go to the top 1% which seems to be counter to everything they're saying. So it's, you know, it, it's got to at least go through some hearings and have some scrutiny so we know what the heck's going on. I mean, I'd love to cut taxes for the top 1% and everybody else, but not through the salt. You know, that's not the right way to do it, and it will blow a hole. Now, look at, Senator, I know uh, you want the infrastructure bill to pass in the House, and a lot of people do, but... I'm still concerned, uh, apart from the specifics, and you know my view, there's some good and there's some not so good, but that thing yeah. was not deficit neutral. I mean, it still has, it comes in with the deficit and nobody's really um, provided that, uh, those resources to pay for. Well, it does have pay for us, including, by the way, repurposing money that went out under COVID that has never been spent, which I think is a great pay for, and that was a big fight to get <laughs> Democrats to agree to that. Uh, but also there's a lot of economic growth that will occur. I mean, you look at the analysis of infrastructure, just as, frankly, in the budget uh, twice for the Trump administration, there was a $1.5 trillion infrastructure package. Uh, CBO would say it wasn't paid for, but people knew that, in fact, this was good for the economy. It's a long-term investment in hard assets. It's going to make the economy more efficient and more productive. So this is going to come back to help us. 
So I look at it differently than the stimulus spending, which is money out now into people's pockets, which is going to add to the demand side of the economy. Infrastructure is longer term. By the way, very little money will go out in the next year, two, three years. It'll go out four, five, 10 years, 15 years from now to help develop you know, our infrastructure, to be sure the ports are working better, to be sure we can move freight rail, to be sure that we have bridges that aren't falling down. And, and that'll make the economy more efficient. In my hometown of Cincinnati, as you know, we've got a bridge where 71 and 75 come together. Traffic jams every single day, not just during rush hour. And the economic impact of that is really negative. So opening that up, creating a better and safer way to travel is, is going to help the economy. But be that as it may, the, all these outrageous social spending with gimmicks, you know, four trillion, five, there's, there's no pay for it. I mean, I don't want it. I don't want to pay for it either. But yeah, even in yeah. these bizarre congressional terms, Democrat terms, there's no pay for. Uh, no. Presidents, what does he say? It's cost free? That's just utter nonsense, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And Penn Wharton did a study that came out two days ago. Uh, I spoke on the floor last night about this in more detail. But what it says is that it's actually a $4 trillion mm. bill because there are a lot of budget gimmicks in there to try to make the expensive new social programs seem less expensive. Specifically, they sunset a bunch of them, knowing that, you know, once you start the child tax credit, say, at the yep. new increase, 3600 bucks, yep. you're not, based on history, you're not going to reduce that. So they don't pay for the programs because it's really not $1.8 trillion or whatever they're saying, by the way, which would be, <laughs> you know, tied with the highest spending ever. $4 trillion, by the way, would be twice as much as any single bill has ever spent in the United States Congress, only twice as much because the $1.9 trillion in March. Uh, so in terms of the spending this year, it would be obviously just astronomical and would not just increase uh, inflation, but also puts our debt and deficit in an untenable situation. The debt as a percent of our economy, the G percent of GDP, as you know, is up to levels we haven't seen ever in our country's history. We thought it was back to World War II, but now it's even worse. All I'd ask is that somebody look at yesterday's election results. Folks don't want this yeah. stuff. Rob, I got to go. Yeah. Senator Rob Clear Portman message. of Ohio. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Larry. Appreciate